What up YouTube, TK here, and today we are looking at this ICOM VHF transceiver. I scored this in a little sort of vintage electronic shop in China. You'll see it in a future episode of China Trip where I find this really amazing shop, tons of old radio gear, bits and pieces, even military stuff, super cool. So today we're going to take this apart and maybe try and power it up, not necessarily in that order. I basically bought this for, I think, 250 yuan, probably overpaid a little bit, but it looks so cool. Unfortunately, it does not have an antenna. But just look at this aesthetic, these buttons. Oh, absolutely love it. And it's in passable condition, to be honest. So let's go ahead and start playing with this thing. It's even got a little LCD. First things first, we turn this on. Nothing happens, that's not surprising. It has a rechargeable battery pack and it's jammed. Come on. There we go. So the thing is half battery and doesn't it look even cooler like this? Um, that's more a size of today's radios that run off lithium batteries. This is just battery pack. It's actually quite light. I think it uses nickel cadmium cells due to its age. It has a DC power input here and on the other side, it has a wall charger input. So I assume you could either run the radio directly off a DC power supply, or you could use the wall charger to charge the batteries. What I find interesting is it appears the battery terminals are just screws. Now, ICOM, I would have thought, if this is a real ICOM, ICOM I thought were a pretty good brand. So I'm kind of surprised to see them using screws for battery terminals. But hey, it was the 70s, 80s, times were tough, I guess. What is cool is this is from the era before everything had torque screws in it to try and stop you taking things apart. And it's so stupid because you can just buy a torque screwdriver. It just makes life a bit more annoying than it otherwise has to be. That said, Phillips screws are kind of junk because they always, always strip. So, you know... Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at that little baby nickel metal hydride pack. Hello. Some kind of... Ah. Okay, so in here, we have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven nickel metal hydride cells. Eleven times 1.2 is... a number. Uh... That's probably close to 13.8 volts because that's what it's asking for on the back. That's really interesting. I've never seen something with that many cells. I guess they want to... I, I don't know why you would want such a high voltage in the thing. Why you would care. Why, why you couldn't just run the thing off, you know, 9 volts or something. Maybe some of the radio guys or the old analog electronics guys would be able to tell me why we needed such a high number of cells. And there's actually a board in here of some electronical capability. And that's interesting, because I would have thought it would just be batteries. Let's see if we can figure out what that does. So, uh, we're grounded to the case. Um, diode, resistor, um, capacitor, LED, weird thing. I don't really know what this... Oh. What's a B909M? Okay, we'll look that up. Okay, so that there is a PNP transistor. As is that, so there's two PNP transistors in it. There's a capacitor that they haven't populated. If you have any idea what this circuit actually does, uh, let me know, because yeah, that is confusing the heck out of me. But just for fun, let's see what the battery pack reads. We get a full 0.9 volts from 11 cells. Wow, not really a uh, not really a champion effort there. Oh, wow, look at this. That actually looks like it's got a thermocouple in the pack. We'll see if we can pull that out. That is that is so cool. In something this old, they actually had temperature protection in the pack. Oh, would you look at that? It looks like they've left the cardboard case off one of the cells so they can bond a thermocouple. You know, really tape it on there. 
You can see as well, they've done this nice and properly. They've got spot welding, putting the tabs on the batteries. That's, a, that's how you put a proper pack together. Nice, low resistance. Very sturdy way to make a pack. Much better than soldering. But yeah, look at that. That is amazing. I'm going to see if we can look closer at that thermocouple. I feel bad kind of pulling this apart, but these cells are, you know, probably 30, 40 years old. This is old school electronics. They don't make, like, I don't mean to be a dick, but they don't make them like this anymore. Look at that piece of work. Absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm assuming it is a thermocouple. If it's not a thermocouple, I can't imagine it being anything else. Why would you need to stuff it right next to a battery? So it must be a thermocouple, but that is cool. Metal case and everything. Very cool. I think back in the day, they used to make things completely over-engineered because they weren't very good at things and they wanted to make sure it would last so they just they gave it everything these days they sort of know oh we can still kind of make it last and we'll just cut a few corners but they really i mean look at that it's got i could fire that out of a space shuttle into the face of zeus and that thermocouple would be like yep zeus's face is 43 degrees i'm like thanks thermocouple these days you know your little k type hanging off the end of a piece of string no nah, I wouldn't wouldn't tell you Jack that is cool as beans okay so as always a little more digging turns up more information there's these little wires here attached to a couple cells in the pack my first thought is similar to the individual cell connections they have on lithium packs that could mean this is some kind of protection circuit to stop the uh Stop the battery getting discharged too low, which would have been pretty important in the old uh, in the olden days when these batteries would have been horrendously expensive. We got another thing, and this is welded in series with the pack. What is this? It's in series. Is that some kind of fuse? Wow, look at it. Don't even know what it is. Wow, I am learning. I thought honestly this would be a boring teardown. Wow. So I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. It's got this plasticky, papery, tapey substance. Should we cut it open? It doesn't smell great. Don't really, don't really want to cut something open if it's going to blow up in my face. Seems unlikely. I'm guessing it's a fuse, but like, what's with this weird folded over construction at the back? I read an article written by some ham online that said this was a temperature sensor, but I've never seen a temperature sensor that sits in line with the batteries. Um, I want to really get into this metal can, see what's in here. I wasn't going to take this apart, but then I thought I definitely should because I've never seen one before. Oh, we're getting in. What the chutney? So I've never seen anything like this before. You've got the two halves of the shell that had this papery membrane in between. And then underneath, you've got this thing covered in the number four. Don't know. I have a feeling it may be some kind of bimetallic strip that when it heats up, it deforms and breaks the connection with the pack, you know, in series. If it isn't that, please throw it in the comments because I've never seen anything like it before. That is truly interesting. So yeah, I have a feeling this circuit must be some kind of very old school battery management system to stop these over discharging or getting too hot or otherwise blowing up. Hello. What is that? What is this blue cube? 14 volt DC. Is that a little relay? So I think this little blue box here is a relay. We'll just try powering it up and see if it makes cute little clicking noises. Don't have anything powered up with. Oh wait, yes I do. If you're wondering why I use the scooter batteries to power everything, the reason is twofold. One, I don't have the parts to finish the scooter yet. Two, I don't have a power supply. But, needs must. Here we go on this week's episode of Is It A Relay? Is it a relay? It's a relay! It's a relay! So that's our, that's our little battery pack. Here's the radio. So before we take the radio apart, I think we'll try and power it up and see what it can do because it looks really cool, doesn't it? Um, we might try and use the battery packs connectors to feed it some power. Look at that. 
that is just that is a belt strap that just you don't muck around with. If you're running around doing die hard for the evening, you know, with your Steyr org machine gun, you know, you need a radio to talk to Alan Rickman and be like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get him. You know, you can't have it falling off your belt, can you? This is the radio to go to. That's why that's why people like an icon. That is sick. All right, we'll uh, see if we can power this up. It actually kind of comes in handy using a five cell lithium as a power supply because it's got all these useful voltages like three and a bit volts, seven and a bit volts, 10 and a bit volts, 15-ish volts. All right, I need a power supply, but until then we're gonna carry on. Plonk that there, that's a technical term, plonk. Oh God, I'm so scared, bang! <clears throat> If this blows up, I'm going to cry, or I'm probably going to scream. Okay, here we go. That was the multimeter. <laughs> All right, no smoke, so we'll turn that off. Not a terrible start, not a good one either. Try it again. On. Not a cracker. Okay, that's disappointing. All right, back to the drawing board. Could be dead, for all I know, this thing might not work at all. So we haven't been able to power this up, so instead we will take it apart. Look at these knobs, glorious, very stylish. They got little rubber grommets there so water doesn't get in. Real cool, those are excellent. Taking a bunch of screws out. Oh, that was, wow, old technology is so easy to take apart. Look at that inside, That is that is beautiful. In my opinion, modern tech is just, it's got nothing on this. Look at that, that is absolutely gorgeous. Packed in there. Can't, I don't even know how they would have soldered this or populated these boards. It would have had to have been by hand. Can't imagine whose job it was to come in here, put in 200, 300 components. You know, if you forget one of these little rubber covers on these crystals, the whole thing shorts out and burns down. Wow. What do we got in here? So look, we've got a whole bunch of caps and inductors and resistors and magical radio stuff. I'm not even gonna try and understand that. That's a B571C. I'm gonna say it's an op amp, it probably isn't. You now we got a 55E, couple of crystals for doing radio magic. Um, I'd love to tell you what that chip is, but as you can see, that crystal has an extra lead soldered to its case as does this crystal. I've never seen that before. They got the two crystal legs and then they've got an extra one soldered to the case. I don't know if that's for grounding or not. You got another couple of crystals here. That does something. To be honest, I don't know a lot about radio, so I'm probably not the right person to be doing this tear down, but it's nice to look at, isn't it? I can't tell you how relaxing it is to take something apart from the area before they figured out how to make everything snap together. Because everything that snaps together does not snap back together and it's it's frustrating it's painful you generally damage it taking it apart this is nice just a whole bunch of screws and a bit of wriggling and it's out it's a lot more fun it's 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 quite relaxing to take apart look at that there's a flat flex connector and i yanked really hard on it and it didn't break because god is merciful today apparently he's not often merciful but he is today i'm gonna try powering this up again so I'm trying to plug this in, and you can hear a relay ticking. Oh my god, oh my god, it's on. Uh oh, no, yank, yank, that was bad. Okay, but it was on for a split second, I hope I didn't just kill it. Oh, that is awesome. So the problem that looks like we were having was the battery contacts on the bottom weren't making good contact, which isn't surprising considering there are a bunch of bloody screws. And I don't mean they're prison snitches either. Oh, we'll try and power that up again. That was elating. I actually saw the display come up. I just, oh, I have a feeling I'm gonna blow this thing up. Round two. Relay click. On. That's awesome. 46 is a shit number. Keypad doesn't appear to do much. What the shit does that? Why does it do that? Don't like that sound at all. 
So this side of the board is actually a bit more interesting. Now, here we have a couple of Toshiba chips. Those are just 4000 series CMOS logic. This chip, I don't know what it does. It says 9211K TA75395P. I don't know if that's just a little op amp or something. This is a Malaysia C358C 9211N52. Again, I don't know. I'm going to say op amp. I'm probably wrong. Here we have the pots for controlling volume and squelch. Buttons for controlling a light of some kind. That's probably a backlight. Oh yeah, that's a that's a this this light button controls this lamp here. That's actually a bulb behind the LCD. Very old school. I like that. And this button is for high and low power. This here, this is very interesting. This is my favorite. This is a Hitachi HD44795. It's a four bit CMOS microcontroller. Yes, you heard me right. Four bit. Probably very closely related to the HD44780 Hitachi chip, which controls all those two line character LCDs that we all used to use when we were playing with Arduinos. Very cool. I don't know why it's screeching. I really want to stop it screeching. We will find out, or actually probably we won't. Probably it'll just squeal heaps and then die completely and that'll be the end of the video. But I would like to find out, or more accurately, I'd like to just get the thing to work. Damn it. Okay, it's still screaming like a banshee. I realize that is a backup battery for the program channels that you save to the device. It is not a piezo buzzer. Whatever is screaming, I guess it's an inductor of some kind. I found the culprit YouTube. It's another one of those bloody relays. Listen to this. It shouldn't be doing that. And I don't know why it's doing that, but I'm not happy about it. What if I try hitting it? No, that didn't help. Do you notice when I connect it now, you don't hear the relay click? Well, you're not gonna hear it click if I mess up like that, but. Yeah, you don't hear it click at all. Before you would hear the relay click when I plug the power in. I reckon that relay has gone cactus on us. However, if it's anything like the other one, I do have a spare. This is crazy. It actually has this three-way cantilever design. So you got the front cover, the middle, and then it splits again. And look at that. That's just, there's two boards covered in components. Now I can get at that relay, see if I can swap that out. I'm not confident that's gonna do anything or if it's even the same relay, but that's about all I can think of. The relay's screaming, so replace the relay, right? That sounds dumb even to me. Why would the relay break? More likely something's oscillating and that's what's making the relay scream. I just can't think what. Ah. Okay, so what is more likely the problem is somewhere on here there's a dried out electrolytic capacitor that's just dead. And if we replace that, that'll stop the radio oscillating and flicking that relay on and off like a nut bag. Unfortunately, there's a million of these little electrolytics in here and I don't have 20 years to replace all of them. But we'll swap out this relay maybe, see how we go. Believe it or not, I actually got that relay yanked and replaced in about 15 minutes flat. I uh, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't just see myself do it with my own eyes. I um, I really don't care if this works at this point because I'm just really uh, ecstatic with how easy and quickly I got that soldering job done. We'll try and power it up again. I'll just uh, sort of slide these bits back together. Now, if this doesn't work, rather than try and replace electrolytics, which is just, you know, there's too many, I can't be bothered. Sometimes even TK does need to sleep. Uh, we'll just screw it all back together and see if that magically fixes it, but I think it probably won't. We might also just leave it plugged in for a while. Sometimes electrolytic capacitors can magically reform themselves and start working again. I'm, I'm not full of shit. It's a thing. Look it up. All right, still no sound. Oh, it's even deader now than it was before. Now it's just not doing anything except smelling like it's on fire. That's, that's annoying YouTube. I, oh, something's definitely gone. That smells awful. Um, that's a shame. I 
thought, like for a split second we had that LCD on, I actually thought I was going to have a cool radio I could play with. And unfortunately, not. Yeah, that relay did not like being put where it was. Maybe it was a different relay, but most of the numbers were the same, so I thought it would be a straight swap. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to swap the relays again. Put this thing back together, leave it powered up for X minutes. And uh, if that doesn't fix it, nothing will, and I'm going to bed. Now, we're just going to put this back together. It's a bit like origami, this old 80s style of basically layered little metal cages that lock and unroll from each other. It's really cool, but uh, can sometimes take a bit of finagling to determine how you get it all back together. So we'll pair it up, not feeling particularly hopeful. Didn't hear any clicks, which is bad because before we did and it was good. Yeah, it's dead as a door now, now, so... <sighs> it was what I probably should have done. Alright, this is a lesson, YouTube. What I should have done is when it was screaming like that, I should have just turned it off, left the battery connected, let those capacitors reform and do whatever they needed to do, because electrolytic capacitors can sometimes come back for you like that. Unfortunately, what I did is I went in there heavy with a soldering iron. I've clearly made things a lot worse. I've probably destroyed these little relays, um, which is a shame. But yeah, so that was a bit of a loss. But we did get to look inside a very cool old radio, and sadly, we did kill it. Which, yeah, a bit of a bit of a sad ending to this week's video. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, looking at something a bit different this week, a vintage ham radio. Got some cool stuff coming up. See you in a fortnight. TK out.